Here's a solution to question number 14 from the section 6.3 online problems. We're given uh, measurements here for some kind of weird looking shape and instead of being told the formula for the function that sweeps out the top. So um, what we need to do is just use the measurements as best we can. So this, if you look at it, this is uh, showing how the solid is, is uh, decomposed into six pieces. If you were to make cuts across all those places where they gave measurements, you end up with six pieces. Um, what they're asking us to do is just estimate the volume of each of those six pieces and then sum them together. So we're we're literally acting out the process, uh, which really which is what integration is for, but we're doing it for um, for six specific slices of an object rather than doing it for a theoretical, um, you know, infinitely thin slice with delta x. So um, I know that each slice I pick out, we can approximate the volume using the area of a surface times the thickness. And, um, and so the issue here, since these things are not, uh, we're not doing them infinitely thin, is that a lot of these slices are going to have different areas uh, on the right-hand face and on the left-hand face. In each case, the face is a circle, but uh, the left-hand face and right-hand face will be... Um, might have different areas, and that'll definitely be true in here, where you can see this has got such a bevel to it that this side definitely has a smaller area than this one. And so when you could get different areas, depending on which face you look at, then you're going to get different estimates. They're all going to be decent estimates, but they're going to be different. And so that's why it's important that they, they tell us that they want to use the left Riemann sums, which means that uh, for every slice that we take, we want to use the left side uh, face as our estimate for the, um, for the area of the face. And that'll, I'm sorry, that'll be the face that we use for our area of the volume. So in all cases, when we pull a slice out, we use the, um, we use the left-hand side as the area. Okay, so, um, so let's just, uh, let's just grab one. So let's say I grab this one, this first one, and I like drawing it, so I'm going to bring it over here. Uh, if I look at it from front on, it's going to be a circle. If I look at it from the uh, the left side, it's going to be a circle, and it's going to have a little bit of, of thickness to it. So it's going to be some kind of circular uh, pellet-looking thing. Uh, well, what I need to know is I need to know the radius, and I need to know the thickness. Well, we're told on the left-hand side that the diameter is 12.4. Well, that means the radius is 6.2. So radius here is 6.2. 6 These are all in centimeters. And the thickness of this thing, well, the thickness is uh, however far it is between these two dots. Well, they tell me that I've got 50 centimeters here total, and I'm breaking this into, again, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So the uh, delta x is just 50 over 6. Not a whole number, but not, not a terrible thing. So 50 over 6, or 25 thirds, is going to be the thickness of each of these slices. So the volume of this one slice is approximately pi times 6.2 squared times 25 thirds. That's the approximate volume <coughs> of this piece when I pull it out and set it over there. Well, now we can see what to do for every slice. Um, in each case, they give me a diameter, and I really need the radius. So I've, I have made a handy table here using Excel. I just wrote down the, the diameters. Maybe I wrote them all right. Yeah, looks like it. And for each one, I wrote the radius. And for each one of those, I went ahead and calculated the radius squared, because I know that's part of, this, part of this calculation. So without drawing the picture for the other ones, uh, I can tell you what we're going to get. The second slice, this one here, we're going to use the left side for the face that we're going to base the area on. That has a diameter of 14, so a radius of 7. And so the volume of that piece is approximately pi times 7 squared times 25 thirds. The third piece has a radius of 8.4. Again, it's this guy. 
and this is the side that it's uh, this area that we're going to use for the approximation and diameter 16.8 means a radius of 8.4 and so the volume of this piece is pi times 8.4 squared times 25 thirds and I'm going to do this for each of the six slices so that's slice number one slice number two slice number three and so on so two three four five six so there are six slices all together so my approximation total volume is approximately just the sum of these things notice that every one of them has a pi and a 25 thirds in it and so i'm just going to factor that out so pi times 25 thirds times and then it's just going to be the sum of this guy squared, this guy squared, this guy squared, and so on. So 6.2 squared plus 7 squared plus 8.4 squared. And I'll read off the more table values. Uh, 8.4 squared, 12.7 squared, 18.2 squared, 21 squared. Notice that uh, I don't really need to know this last, this last value, the right hand face over here, never gets used for an estimate for anything, because in all, all cases when I'm taking the slice, I'm using its left hand face as the area that, which I'm basing my approximation of the volume. If instead of asking me for the left Riemann sums, they asked me for the right Riemann sums, then I would use all these right hand sides, and it's this first guy over here that I would never get to use, because it's the far left side. But this will be our, um, this will be the answer, whatever this is. And they do want you to leave it like this first. That's why I did this. I made these radius squared. So in Excel, I could just add these guys up. That's not rounded off. That really is exactly how many decimal places you get when you square this. So I could add these up, multiply by pi, multiply by 25 thirds. As long as I'm holding all that in my calculator, then I'll be sure that's exactly, or at least as close as I can get to being right for the data that I'm given. And then it's that answer that I round off to two decimal places to enter into the computer system.